I'm Cecilia Louie of Paper Zen. Have you ever wanted to keep your quilling strips sorted by color spectrum and then separated by long, medium, and short strips? I love this ability to store it in a binder, flat, or to gather them all up and put it in a bin so I can access all these colors on my desk. In this video, I'll show you how to make this yourself using my free downloadable template, an inexpensive sheet protector like this, and a sewing machine. Please note that the paper strips I have here, I've cut myself from a sheet of eight and a half by 11 Canson Meton paper. It's a little thicker than conventional quilling paper. And as you can tell, it's only 11 inches. So this technique might not be suitable for conventional quilling strips, which tend to be thinner and quite a lot longer. Now, some of you may recall, I shot a previous video showing a similar method using photo negative sleeve holders. And I, I still love this method, but I've run out of the sheets. And rather than buying more of this type, I actually bought the single sheet page protectors because they're cheaper and more readily available. Now, one of the things that I didn't like about this method was how to store the shorter strips. Currently, what I've done is, you know, just shove them back into my bin, but you know, when I'm looking for a small sheet, it's hard to find, it's hard to grab. And when I did get around to reorganizing them in the negative sheet holders, if it was a really short strip, I'd have to go dig in here using, you know, a, a pair of tweezers. So that's not fun. I'll show you, this is a much improved version now. So I'm going to show you my journey I took to get to my final stage. First, I took a single sheet protector like this and I cut the top third off, move that down to the bottom. And so now this is perfect for putting the long strips in at the top. Medium strips go in this pocket and shorter strips go in this front pocket. And to differentiate between the front pocket and the medium pocket, I don't know if you can see this, there's actually a curve that I made just along here. And this way it allowed the seam to go right along that full length of that edge and yet still make two separate pockets going on for those two shorter lengths. But you know, of course I can't just let it go at that little curve. I wanted to make it a little fancier. <laughs> so I came up with this next version here where I gave it a little fancy pocket. But then I kind of realized, well, actually it, it was a bit of hassle to, you know, kind of sh shimmy this back and forth just to make this top part open, just to insert that long piece in. So of course, you know, if I differentiated here, I thought I thought I could do that up here. So I did that with the third rendition. So now it makes it super easy to just shimmy that into the top and no fuss. But then I kind of realized, uh oh, now this po pocket down here is really rather short and it's okay for, you know, really short pieces, but really I meant to have it just a little bit taller than, than this little tiny pocket I've got going on. So for my last and final rendition, I basically have shortened that tab gap between these, you know, flaps. So let me show you how it's made. Now to make this project, you're going to need a single sheet protector here, a printer and some cardstock, a metal ruler, a scoring tool such as a dried up pen, an X-Acto knife, a sewing machine, and if you come to my blog, you can download this free template and you can find the link in the notes below. And just a note here, most printers, they can't go right to the edge of the paper. So my template got cut off right around here. And all I did was take a pen and just kind of continue that line all the way to the edge. You can see that in blue here and here, and just make sure that the two are matching up in terms of the height here. Okay, so the first step is to insert this template inside the sheet protector. And, you know, don't worry that there's holes here. It was just left over from another project and it doesn't matter that there's holes there. 
Now, so we've got it inside our protector and we're just going to use a scoring tool and basically lightly score across the surface of the sheet protector. And it's going to give us like a general guideline when we go sewing. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to cut the straight area of this line here and I'm going to freehand the curved section here and here. And we don't have to go very hard or deep because this is a very thin sheet of plastic. We're using the cardstock here mainly as a method to not hurt our work surface. So we're just lightly cutting this line. And as I get to the curved area, I'm just going to freehand that. And freehand this section. Okay. Now I'm going to take the template out and just confirm that that got cut properly. Now before I insert the template back in, I'm just going to take a pen and carefully look at where did that cut line go right at that edge. So basically if this is where the flap is, I'm just marking where did that flap end meet the edge of my divider. And I'm going to do the same on this side. Now on the other side it was like this. Now this time we're going to insert it upside down. And if you're ever looking for the materials that I'm showing here, all the links are going to be in my show notes, okay? Now I'm just lining up the blue line to the blue line that I made on my cardboard. And again, I'm going to just use a ruler for the straight parts and go very shallow cuts. And when I get to the curved area, I'm going to freehand that and freehand the other side. And just remember, if you're enjoying this tutorial, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you're new to my channel, you can hit the subscribe button too. Okay, now we can take that template out and this part should come apart. If not, we'll just kind of quickly give it another little snip there. And you see right here, we just need to cut through the margin now. And now we've got our two pieces. So this back piece already has the back flap. And this was originally up here. And what we're going to do is not move it down, but flip it over. And what that's going to do is this pocket in the front is shallower than the pocket in the back. And we need to flip it also because these holes need to match up. If you just kind of moved it down, it doesn't quite work. So we're flipping it upside down. So I'm just going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to start with the middle columns first and work my way out. So the first two middle columns, then the second ones out here. And finally, it'll help everything register. I'm going to sew here, here, and here. Okay, and I'll come right back. And here's my finished divider. I love how this looks. It's so easy to use. Every segment has their own space and they're all neatly divided. They can be flattened and put inside a binder if I need to go travel or put them away in storage. And I have to say I'm a lot like Monica from Friends, but I can't help it. I feel a thrill of pleasure when I see how neat and tidy my supplies are, especially when it's something that I made myself that never existed before. So 
I hope you'll leave me a comment below and I just love reading what you think of this idea, whether you try it, how it works for you. Your comments or your thumbs up lets me know that you want more tutorials like this in the future. Have fun making your dividers and I want to hear about them, okay?